Hey guys, this video is going to be a little different than our normal videos. We received some feedback from some of our viewers that they were interested in learning SketchUp, which is a free program that we used to design our van layout. So I attempted to make a tutorial covering most of the basic tools that I used, but I've never made a tutorial before, so don't be too harsh on my tutorial skills. One thing I suggest is pausing the video after I teach you something new, and then going and trying it yourself. Hope you guys enjoy the video! Let's go ahead and click on this arrow down here where it says template. This is all the different templates that SketchUp has to offer. Um, so what you're going to go ahead for this one is to either click simple template feet and inches or simple template meters. I'm in the US so I go by feet and inches. So let's click start using SketchUp. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to talk about is movement. Uh, you can't really do anything in this program without movement. Um, to be able to see what you're working on, you need to use a couple tools. Now the orbit tool lets you orbit the camera. And then you have the pan tool, which lets you move side to side, up and down. So a little trick here is with the orbital tool, you can hold shift while you're using the orbit tool, and it switches to pan. And you let go of shift, back to orbit. To zoom, you have this tool here which you click, you move your mouse up, you move your mouse down, and that zooms in and out. But you could also use your scroll wheel if you're using a mouse. Um, you could just scroll up to go in, scroll down to go out. Now actually the first tool I should have mentioned was the default tool, which is the select tool. This lets you click and hold and select objects in your model. These are your lines of axis. Blue is your y-axis, green is your x-axis, red is your z-axis. So this gives you your three dimensions. So now that we have the camera movement down and some of these basic tools to allow us to actually get started, I'm gonna start with the line tool. And that's this up here, it looks like a little pencil. So with the line tool, we can create shapes by just dragging along and you'll see this color pop up. This is just an automatic snap to make it parallel with whichever axis you're on. So so what you can do is click the line tool and then left click anywhere and then drag it. And first thing you'll notice here is at the bottom right of your screen down here in the measurement section you will see a number that is changing. It's going up and up and up. Six and seven, eight, and you'll see feet, inches, whatever dimensions you're using. Um, so this gives you an idea of how long this line is. So for example, here it's about, about eight feet. Eight feet, one inch. Okay, so what I can do is just left click again and it stops the line. Now you can continue the line on any axis you want. So let's say we can make a box or sort of a box. Another way to create a line instead of just dragging it out and watching the numbers increase and then clicking until you get to the length you want is to actually type in the measurement you want. So for example, I want this line to be eight feet. I will just, without clicking anything else, it's still, you've clicked it once and you're still dragging it, you're going to type 8, and you'll see the number change in that bottom right, and then you, if you hit enter now, it will automatically go to inches, but if you put the little apostrophe, which stands for feet, and then hit enter, you will create an 8 foot line, and then, so you're back to the same place as you were before, okay, so we got our line that's eight feet. Now we can make another line along with the red one there. So we want a square laying on the ground. Now type in eight feet again. And then catch the green axis, eight feet again. And then back to our end, to our beginning point. Or we can type eight feet again, but you can just click on this point there and it'll complete the square. And you see this little surface shaded in automatically because now we've created a closed-in structure here. 
and this is flat. The line tool you can create any type of object. So let's say we just click there, we can go to here and create a little triangle. So the tool I use the most is probably, instead of the line tool, use the shape tool the most. Now it's called, it used to be called rectangle tool because it actually creates squares and rectangles here. It just creates a rectangle in any dimension you want. Now you can just, again, watch the numbers on the bottom right and find the dimension that you want and just left click again to complete it. Or you can use the same technique with typing in your measurements. This is a little more complicated because you have to type in two different dimensions or two different lengths because you have a length and width. Um, so for example, let's say we want a box that is six foot comma six foot. That gives us a perfect square with six feet as the length for all sides. The next trick I'm gonna teach you guys is how to select an object using multiple clicks. So say we, so we just created this square, right? We just click it, you just see that surface light up. But if you double click, the entire object lights up. All four sides and both surfaces are highlighted now. And the next tool is probably push and pull tool. So we have our square here. Now with this push and pull tool, we will click any surface once. And then from there, we can just drag it. And that creates our three-dimensional structure. So again, with the line tool and the rectangle tool, depending on how large you want to create it, you can see the distance in the bottom right corner. So you can just drag it to any distance you want. Let's say uh, four feet. There we go. I got it. And then just left click again and reset with spacebar. And now you've got this nice box. It's a three dimensional box. You can now push and pull any surface on this box. So this is really handy tool. You'll be using this tool to create almost every single object in your model. All right, so now we have a three dimensional structure. We need to learn how to move things around. So this next tool is called the move tool. Now you can click on any object, any side, any surface, and drag it around and move it anywhere you want. Now it looks really funny because you're only dragging one surface. So remember, like I mentioned before, double clicking to grab the entire object. When you do that with a three dimensional object, it only selects one surface still because now you've got more than just one plane. So now you need to actually triple click one, two, three. And that selects every touching face and every touching object. And now when you click on that move tool, you can move the entire object as a three dimensional object. You can do the same thing with the line tool. You just look at your measurements down there. It tells you how far you're moving the object away from the original point. And then you can type in a measurement again if you want. Eight feet, I'll just keep going with that. Hit enter. And now you've moved your box eight feet back. Pretend you want to move an object. You don't have to triple click it and move. You can actually make this entire object one object by making it a group. So you can triple click again or use your select tool and just select the whole entire object. That will select everything on that object, which will still work the same as triple clicking. But when you have large objects or objects next to each other, multiple objects, like if I create another object right here and I want to grab this object, it starts to get a little tricky. So the easiest way is just to triple click. So for grouping, you're gonna triple click and then you're gonna right click on that object and you're gonna scroll down to make group. And once you click that, all the surfaces are all now one object. So you can just single click it without triple clicking it and move the whole thing. So now it's treated as a separate unit without all the different surfaces. And if you decide you want to undo that, well, first of all, you can just click 
undo, but if it's too late to undo, you can simply right click it and then go down here and click explode. So now it's back into its separate individual pieces. So I'm gonna make it a group again and it's back to being one piece. You can actually create multiple objects and group groups together. So for example, you have a group here. This is still a separate object. You can triple click that object that's not in the group, make that a group, and then you'll see you've got two different groups here. You can click both of these by adding by clicking on one of them and then clicking holding shift and clicking the other. You'll select both and then right click and make it a group. Now both objects are part of a group. So when you single click it, you can move both objects together. Now if you want to make changes to one of these individual pieces here, you don't have to explode it to do that. This next thing is what I call <laughs> going into another dimension. Um, if you double click on your group, all of a sudden you are in another dimension where you can edit individual pieces in the group. So for example, in this group we have two different groups. So now we can move this group without moving the other group. And then uh, clicking outside the box here. And now your group is still a group, but it looks different. So you were able to move that group by just double clicking and dragging it, moving it around. And then click away and it's back there. Um, again, you can go deeper because this is a group here. It's a group within a group. I mean, it's groupception. So we just double click again. Now we've got back to our original uh, surfaces and sides and you can make changes to these now. So for example, if you would for some reason want to create this weird shape and then click out here, now you've altered the group. So I hope this video helped you guys get a grasp on using SketchUp. If I wasn't clear about something, you can leave a comment below and ask questions. I'll do my best to answer. Like I said, I'm, I'm not a professional SketchUp user. If you've never used SketchUp before, I provided a link to download SketchUp in the description. But thanks again, guys, and look forward to hearing your comments.